I'd like to say good evening to each and every one of you. We're thankful to God for He allowing us to be here on this uh, Lord's Day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God is so gracious and God is so kind and we're so thankful for everything that He has done and the things that He's doing in our lives. He has placed us in a very uh, uh, good position, uh, we say, and you say, well, how do you say a good position uh, in times such as these that we're living in? How could it be in such a good position? It's a good position uh, that he has placed us in because now we can be witnesses to a dying world, to a world that's filled with sin, a world that's in darkness. We are the lights of the world. Christ shines in us and we shine in the world. Let us pray. Dear Lord, how we thank you and how we give you all of the praises. Bless us tonight as we study your word. We pray that thou will search our hearts and search our minds tonight, Lord God. If you find anything that is not of you that's in us, we pray that thou will move it out of the way. We pray, Lord God, that thou will sanctify our hearts, sanctify our minds, Lord God, sanctify our souls as we give you all of the praises. You're worthy to be praised. We pray for our homes. We pray for our families. We pray for this world that we're living in right now. We pray for those that know you're not in a pardon of their sins, that they will come to you, seek you as Lord and Savior of their lives, come to you and give themselves to you, surrender their lives to you, repent of their sins, and turn from their wicked ways and turn to you, O oh Lord God, who will save their souls. O oh, bless tonight, hold us and keep us, we pray, and all praises to thee we shall continually and always give unto thee is your service prayer, pray in the perfect name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, amen. We're glad to be here on, on tonight. We're thankful uh, to God for, uh, as I said, I can't say it enough for everything that he, he's doing in our lives, everything that the Lord is doing in our lives. If you have your Bibles with you, and I know you do, turn with me to uh, the book of First Thessalonians, uh, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, and that first chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through uh, verses 10, we'll, we'll uh, dive into on tonight. Uh, our subject tonight, we'll talk about, I hope so or I know. That's the question. I hope so or I know. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. Let me just, let me just uh, uh, read those verses uh, to us. Not too many. We, we have a little time. We'll read those verses. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know, what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves true of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come I hope so or I 
no. Ask the question, if you will, uh, to someone. The question would be, are you sure you have eternal life? Are you sure you have eternal life? Now, you're going to get an answer back. An answer is likely to be one of three responses. Normally, normally, one of three responses. No, I hope so, but no one can know for certain. Hmm. Or, yes, I'm sure. Well, Paul was confident of the Thessalonian salvation and said, we know. It's a good thing to know something and not take suggestions from anybody that suggestion that this may be the answer, that may be the answer, it could be this way, it could be that way, uh, it could be another way. But when you know, no one has to tell you, you already no, you are confident. Paul was confident of the Thessalonians' salvation. You have to be confident. You have to know that you're saved. You can't walk around guessing and thinking, uh, I might be, or I could be, or I should be, or anything like that. The Word of God is positive about our salvation. Either you're saved or you're not. And with the Lord is either yea or nay. God doesn't have any gray areas uh, where we can just float in the middle and kind of say, well, I'll take any path that comes by. It could be this way. It could be that way. No, no, no. It's either yes or no. And you have to know that you're saved, and the Word of God lets us know whether or not we are saved. And Paul was confident of the Thessalonian salvation, and he said, he said, we know that he has chosen you. And then, then he gives three ways that they could be assured of their salvation, assured of their salvation. It, it's, it, it's such a good, good thing spiritually in our hearts and in our souls that, that relief that we have to know that we are saved. We know that we are with the Lord. We know that we're walking in his spirit. We know that he is with us. We know that he cares for us. We know that he loves us, and we know that he's going to look out for us. But Paul, he gives three ways that they could be assured of their salvation. First of all, number one, he says, he, he, he looks at the source of salvation. Where, this is, where does this salvation come from? The source of this salvation. We, we, we need salvation. But the source has to be the right source in order for us to be truly saved and know that we're saved. Look what he says, beloved by God. See what love the Father. Let's, let's, let's look at the scripture here first. Let's look at the scripture in John, the third chapter. John chapter three, it's so good. John chapter 3, uh, uh, we, we find uh, uh, that God is letting us uh, uh, know 1 John, I'm sorry, 1 John, 1 John, the third chapter, 1 John, the third chapter, God is letting us uh, uh, know here in 1 John, the third chapter, and he lets us know in verse 1, he says, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He bestowed his love on us so that we should be called the sons of God. He says, therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. 
God made himself manifest to us to, so that we could know him. The world doesn't know him. The world does not believe in God. The world believes in what they can see. The world believes in, in what they're doing at the moment, feel good at the moment. Everything is all right for the moment. They live for the moment, but they cannot see God or God reveals himself to us, but we have to what? We have to receive. He says, see what love the Father has given us, that we should, Revised Standard Version, version says, that we should be called the children, called children of God. And so we are. We are the children of God. Can you imagine a young man giving his fiance a diamond ring with with the stipulations that says, if you happen to lose the ring, it's all over. What stipulations would that, uh, how could there be any love there? If she loses the ring, then it's all over. What, what is that? What, what kind of stipulations is that? See, if you happen to lose the ring, it's all over. Genuine love, real love, is complete, and it is unreserved. Whether the ring is lost, whether you have it or not, the love is still there because it's for better or for worse. Certainly, you be uh, 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 kind of uh, out or whatever. You say, well, yeah, you lost the ring, or that's a that's a pricey thing to lose, but you're still here with me. The ring doesn't mean more than what you mean to me. We mean more to the Lord because he has taken what our sins away from us. We've lost something. We've lost our sins. He has taken them from us. If you happen to lose the ring, it's all genuine love is, is, is unreserved for better or for worse. Uh, marital love is an, an, an earthen, earthly pattern. It's an earthly pattern of God's love. He shows his love for us, just like in a marriage, that a husband shows his love for his wife. God shows his love for us, his bride, the church, and he takes very good care of his bride, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Our salvation is secure. Why? Because it, 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 it rests on the eternal love of God, the everlasting love of God. This is what it rests upon. The Roman Christians were reminded that nothing shall be able to separate them. Now, we go back to the book of Romans. We have to be reminded, and it's a good thing that we are, what, reminded uh, uh, of things uh, that God has already told us. Look what it says in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read two verses there, verse 38 and 39. He says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall be shall be able to separate us so the roman christians were reminded that nothing shall be able to separate them from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord grounded in the word communicated by the holy spirit Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, we go back to 1 Thessalonians, that first chapter and the fifth verse, he says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, 
but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance, as ye know, what manner of men we were for your sake, grounded in the world, word, communi co communicated by the Holy Spirit. He says, our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in the power of the Holy Spirit with full conviction. H.A. Ironside said, he said, faith rests on the naked word of God, just the plain word of God. Nothing dressed up, don't have to be, it's just the plain word of God. That word believed, when you believe the word, it gives you full assurance. You have to believe what the Lord is saying in his word. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to convict us of sin. And oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. It convicts us of sin, judgment, and the righteousness of Christ. We can be sure of our salvation because the source is the love of God communicated by the Holy Spirit that dwells what within us through the Bible, leaving us with the assurance that we have done what the Word requires. When you've done what the Word requires, you're all right with the Lord. And that's what we want to do. That's why it's so very important for us to do what the Lord tells us to do. Follow His Word. Follow His example. And God will clear the way for you. So we can be sure of our salvation because the source is the love of God communicated by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, leaving us with the assurance we have done what the Word requires. And then secondly, a response to salvation. Paul had confidence that the Thessalonians' relationship with God uh, because they had received the word, received the word, not just heard the word, but they had received the word. When you receive the word, the word is in you. The word becomes a part of you. The Holy Spirit draws the word inside of us like a magnet. It attracts, it brings it in. When we pray, the Holy Spirit, teach me. The Holy Spirit brings in those, the word, the good things that God wants us to hear, the good things that God wants us to know. It's like a magnet. It, it, it draws it inside of us. So Paul says because they had what? Their relationship with God. He knew their relationship with God was good because they had what? Received the word. So we look at first uh, 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 Thessalonians that... Uh, uh, first chapter in the sixth verse, and he said, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. With joy of the Holy Ghost. They, they had been through some things, and yes, we, we, we have to go through some things, but he said that they had become followers of Paul. They had become followers. Why? Because uh, uh, they, they, Paul, they had set a good example for them. And ye became followers of us. And here we say became followers of us. So there was a time in their lives that they were not followers, but they became followers. There was a time in our lives that we were not followers, but we became followers. We saw good examples of Christian love through others, and we wanted to know more about it. We, the Holy Spirit was working on us all the while 
abiding in us, and yet we didn't realize what we had inside of us, and yet there were examples. That's why it's so important for us to live the life that we talk about, because others are watching us. They want to see Christ in us. They don't want to just hear us talk about Christ, but they want to see Christ in us. They want to see examples of the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts. So he says here that they had that they became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now, two elements are involved in, in the response. The first element is repentance. Look what, look what, look what uh, uh, Paul says uh, uh, to them in 1 Thessalonians, that first chapter. Look at that ninth verse. He said, For they themselves, true of us, what manner of entering in we had unto you, <clears throat> and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Hmm. Repentance. You turn to God from idols. So now their past life, they were serving idols. But now in their present life, after they have received the Lord, they are serving the Lord. They have turned. You see, you can't have two gods. You have to denounce one completely and serve the other. You can't have it both ways. And Paul said, he said, you turn to God from idols. You made up your mind that we're not going to, to serve idol gods. We're going to serve the true and living God. Repentance, what does it mean? Repentance means to turn and go in the opposite direction. It doesn't mean sidestep. It, it doesn't mean stop. It means turn around and go in the opposite direction, turn from sin and turn back to God. Thessalonica was located about 50 miles from Mount Olympus. And Mount Olympus was considered to be the home of the gods, little g, gods. The Thessalonians had renounced dead idols for the living Lord. Authentic conversion is a change of loyalty and lifestyle. Now they are loyal to the Lord. And because of their loyalty to the Lord, their lives have what? Changed. Their lifestyle has changed. They renounced the dead idols. Now they're serving the true and the living God. And their lifestyle has changed. The second element is faith. Repentance turns us away from sin. And yes, we have to turn away from sin. True repentance turns us away from sin. And faith turns us to God. Faith is the individual's response to God's love. We respond to God's love by having faith in God's love. To all who, let's look at, let's look at the scripture here right quick in the book of, now we'll go to the book of John, the first chapter, John chapter 1, and look at verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12 said, but as many as received him. See what I said? As many as received him. 
Everybody that says Lord doesn't necessarily mean that the Lord, that they have actually received the Lord. Remember what I said earlier, the Holy Spirit is a magnet that draws the Word of God inside of us, that draws the good things in, in us. Well, some people say it from their lips, but yet their hearts are far away from God because they have, uh, there are those who are, are perhaps pretenders or uh, uh, want somebody to believe that they have what they don't have, but see, uh, the, the true test uh, uh, happens and you really find out who, who they are. But we have the Holy Spirit on the inside that, that draws the word of God to us. And we have what? Received the word. You know when you have received something, it's in your possession. When you receive the word of God, when God is speaking to your heart, speaking to your mind, it just kind of like, it, 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 it just, it's inside of you. It, it, it's, it becomes a part of you. So, so. They, 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 the, the, the faith turns us to God. To all who have what? Received him, but as many as received him. To them, to them, not to those that were pretending, not to those that said they had something and didn't have it, but to them that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. When you receive him, God knows when you've received him and when you haven't received him. And when you receive him, you become the son of God. So even to them that believe on his name, faith, believing on his name. Hmm. We become the children of God. Faith, faith, faith in the Lord. And then thirdly, the results, results of salvation. So we look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, and look at the 16th verse. Jesus warns uh, uh, of us of false prophets. Let me read just two verses there. Let me read the 15th and the 16th verse. He said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. He said, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? You're going to know them by their fruits. You're going to know whether they have the real thing or not. You're going to know whether they have received the Lord or not. And if they haven't received the Lord and they're false prophets, they're not his children. They don't belong to God. For he said, ye shall know them by their fruits. Now, Paul noticed the results uh, evident in the lives of the Thessalonian believers. He noticed the results. And see, when you have received the Lord in your heart, when you receive God in your heart, then you're going to see some results. That's why when, when you give your life to Christ and, and, and people look at you and they don't understand you now, they see you as the same, you look the same, you walk the same, your voice sounds uh, uh, similar, but, but yet your life is different. The things that you do are different. The things that you say are different from your past. 
your past is here, but now you're over here. You've left this behind. You've turned away from this, and now you have turned to the true and living God. Now you are setting what an example. And Paul noticed the results that were evident in the lives of the Thessalonian believers. Example. They followed good examples. So we go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6, and it says, and ye became followers of us. Followed, they followed good examples. And then in following good examples that Paul, they, that they had set for them, uh, uh, then they were an example for others. Look what it says in verse 7. So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. They became, they followed good examples, and now they were living the life, and others were noticing their lives and saw them as a good example, and they wanted to know more about Christ. Uh, they, they, their practice was, it, it, it backed up their profession, what they did. It backed up their profession. And then there were witnesses. First Thessalonians, that look at that eighth verse, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. Paul said, you all have said it. The word of the Lord sounded forth from you. And, and this phrase, it, uh, uh, it, 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 it emates the, a trumpet blast or uh, a roll of thunder, bold and excited, confident witnesses. How different this is from the mild and the timid and the tepid witnesses that are given by some believers. We cannot be timid about when we talk about the Lord. We have to be bold in our expression when we talk about the Lord. We have to express it like we know, and we should express it like we know because we know it's not something that we're trying to walk on the eggshells about. We flat foot on the floor, and we're going to just tell it, I love the Lord. He loves me. I've been saved. I've been changed, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I can be a witness, a bold witness for the Lord. Not ashamed to tell it anywhere, any place, any time, day or night morning, noon, or night. And then anticipation. They had to wait. Look what he said. They were waiting. They were waiting with anticipation. And the 10th verse said, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come, to wait for his son from heaven. No dread or fear fell over the Thessalonian believers as they faced the future with uncertainty because of persecution. They were being persecuted. We, we don't know what persecution really is, not yet. We may see uh, some in our lifetime before we go and get the right person in office, you just might see some persecution. But as now, we don't really see real persecution. Yes, you have some little things that are happening, but uh, uh, yet there are people in the world that are really going through persecution, being killed for what they believe, being killed because they believe in the Lord. And we have to be ready. We have to know that we're saved, and that if it comes to that, it's between us and death, yes, we die believing. We die believing. 
Yes, we do. We don't give up. We don't surrender our belief for anything or, for, or under any circumstances. We are set, we are fixed, and we are ready. The Thessalonians were going to face the future uh, with uncertainty because of persecution, but there's a song that expresses the Christian's confidence. It says many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Five days before Pulitzer Prize writer William Sarion died, he wrote, everybody has got to die, but I've always believed an exception would be made in my case. Then he asks the question, now what? If he had accepted the Lord as his Savior, he, he wouldn't have to ask the question, now what? He would already know what is next. He would have, be heaven bound. But he asked the question, now what? The confident Christian, that's us, the confident Christian knows what is beyond death. We don't fear death because we know what's beyond death, that it's not the end, it's just the beginning. God bless you this afternoon. God keep you. You don't have to wonder whether or not you're saved. You can know it. God has already proclaimed it through his love for us. If you have received the Lord, not just talked about him, but if you have received the Lord into your life, into your heart, into your soul, into your mind, to come in and take control, the Holy Spirit is in us like a magnet drawing all the good things to us filtering out things that are not of the Lord, but drawing in all the good things so that we may walk in the newness of the Lord. God bless you. We love you. Stay with Jesus. Keep him number one in your life, and I guarantee you he'll work things out for you. Some way, somehow, the Lord always does, and he always will. He'll never leave you nor will he ever forsake you. We love you. Thank God for you. Have a good, blessed evening. Let us pray. Dear Lord, how we thank you today and how we bless your holy and your divine name. Sanctify our hearts, dear Lord, that we, as we receive what you have for us, not just, just hear about it, but receive it into our hearts, receive it into our souls, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, continue to work in us and work through us, giving us everything that we need to make it in this world. Help us continue letting our lights shine in this dark world that others may see us as examples so that they will follow good examples, that they may be good examples. And then on down the line, others will see their example and they will be made good examples. Help us, dear Lord to continue your work, that your will be done in all of our lives, we pray. And all of the praises, all of the glory belong to you and to you only. This is your servant's prayer. I pray we commit it all to you. And in your hands we place it. And we leave it there. We walk away from it. And we allow you to work it out. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank God for you.